previous video there was a not unreasonable question as to why I didn't use the bandsaw to cut the tenon on the heel of my guitar. Now this is one of the offcuts and there's a very good reason why I didn't use the bandsaw and that's because I don't have the depth of cut to take the heel of the guitar. Now this offcut, the heel, is nearly 10 centimetres deep but even if it was 9 centimetres deep I still wouldn't have the necessary depth of cut. Now it was suggested in the comments that it's possible to modify uh, many bandsaws to increase the depth of cut and that's what I'm going to have a go at now. I only need a few extra millimetres. I mean 10 millimetres would be luxury. I probably only need about an extra 7 millimetres. So I think that's doable. I'm not going to remove the upper guide, which is what some people do. I don't think this uh, bandsaw will take that. Um, if it was a better quality uh, bandsaw with, with a proper crown uh, wheel, um, you might get away with it. It's not something I'd recommend. I think it's extremely unsafe practice, but I have seen it done. Um, all I'm going to be doing is trying to put a modification in which will just allow this guide to just go a few millimetres higher. And as I'll show you, there are limitations to how much I can get that way. But I think it's worth doing, so uh, I'll give it a go. I perhaps should explain what I meant by that, that crown uh, comment. Um, there's no crown on this wheel. The, the, the cross section is square. It just comes straight across. There's a rubber tyre, but the rubber tyre has no curve to it. Uh, the wheel is, is, is just a rim, really, with a flat piece of rubber in the middle of it. Um, and as such, you, uh, it depends on a good setup um, with, with the adjustment at the back, uh, tilting the wheel, and, of course, the, the guide bush to keep the blade in the middle of the wheel. Now, on better quality bandsaws, there's a bit of a curve to the top of the wheel, and this has the effect of naturally centering, centering the blade in the middle of the wheel. Um, this is the sa same sort of effect as you get with uh, the wheels of trains where um, the, the train has a tendency to stay within the middle of the tracks. Uh, if you deviate slightly to one side, um, the, the effect of the change of velocities and radii etc. has a tendency to pull the train, or in this case the, the, the blade, back into the middle of the wheel. We haven't got that here and I suspect if I was to remove the upper guide um, the slightest pressure on the blade would immediately push the blade off the wheel irrecoverably. Um, I hope that makes sense. Now the first area of improvement is to shave a couple of millimetres off this post and then we can reclaim this gap here. We're only talking two millimetres, it's just fractions, but it's, it's all worth taking I think. The area I can make the biggest gain is by cutting away this piece of metal here. I may need to file away the edge of this casting to allow it to go up inside the case effectively um, or I try to take a fraction off the, off the case. I don't think on its own that will slot up inside it but I'll, I'll have a go. Um, but this will give me 7mm and that's, that's actually all I need so I should be able to claim a total of 9mm from this conversion. There are of course caveats and here we've got to be careful about the rack and pinion system but I've measured it and there's, there's enough um, extra, <laughs> extra rack. Um, the, the bottom of this is not going to go past the, uh, the centre of the um, cog inside so we're okay for the sake of just seven millimetres that's fine. Any more and the cog would probably come off the end of the rack but the pinion come off the end of the rack but uh, we're okay. One thing we should consider is this cutout in the blade guide. At, at the top of its travel we're still about 10 millimeters away from the blade so we're okay there but that's something we need to, to bear in mind if this is going to go a little bit higher. And yes, I'm doing this all in situ. <laughs> the 
This next bit's the tricky thing because this is steel. I'm probably going to attack this with my uh, Proxon Dremel style router uh, with a cutting tungsten cutting tip but this is enameled and I don't want to attack it when it's all shiny and slippery so I think I will first of all try to create a groove in the surface using my file. I don't know how successful this will be. Uh, the answer? Oh, very successful. I'm wondering whether I could actually cut all the way through like this. <laughs> and I've just realised that this clamp I've used was the one that was clamping the table saw to the bench and it's now, the table saw's now moving. <laughs> so I need to re-clamp. Oops. <laughs> Yay! Ray for metal fatigue. I've now just got to take off a tiny amount from the edge of this. <laughs> Success! That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. No power tools and I didn't really have to expend that much energy using my hand tools. It all went remarkably well. The Wenge that I cut is 91 millimeters. Maybe even 90, no, 91 millimeters. So achievement, achievement unlocked. I, I'm not a gamer. Is that what they say? <laughs> so uh, yeah, result. I didn't mention that this is a Shepak HBS20 bandsaw. I gather from the comments uh, when I feature this, this bandsaw is that a lot of other bandsaws are the same. I think, I think there's a lot of uh, rebadging going on. So it could be that your bandsaw, um, this, this procedure is equally applicable. Um, if, if that's the case, let, let me know the brands of some of the bandsaws out there and whether or not you've had the same sort of success as I have. Um, but yeah, very pleased. So uh, we'll see you in the next video. Ring my bell, uh, subscribe, uh, share, comment. Uh, let me know how you get on. Uh, bye.